Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Ram Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Jay Radha Madhava Jaya Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Jaya Kunja Bihari Jaya Giri Vardhari Jaya Kunja Bihari Jaya Giri Vardhari Shila Prabhupada ki, Shri Shila Bhakta Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur Prabhupada ki, Shri Prem Data Nityananda Prabhu ki, Shri Prem Buddha Shotam Sachidanda Nagoda Hari ki, Malogiriraj Maharaj ki, Shri Bhakti Vigna Venasana Shingo Bhagavana ki, Shri Bhakti Prahlad Maharaj ki, Sankirtan Yagya Ki, Brihat Madanga Bhukta Shibhushan Ki, Grantara Shrimad Bhagavatam Ki, Goprem Anandi Hari Hari Bo, Samaveda Bhakta Vinda Ki, All glories to the assembled devotees, All glories to the assembled devotees, All glories to the assembled devotees, All glories, all glories to Shri Shri Guru and Goranga, All glories to Shri Before we speak on Bhagavatam, my Guru Maharaj instructed me that we should offer prayers to the Bhagavatam. In the Chaitanya Chaitamrita it says that Krishna Tulya Bhagavata Vibhu Sarva Shroi Prati Shloki Prati the Koi that just as Krishna is Vibhu or the Supreme Personality of Godhead, so also is Srimad Bhagavatam. And Prati Shloki Prati Akshinanat the Koi, every verse, every syllable 
of Srimad Bhagavatam has unlimited meaning. So in the same way that we offer prayers to Krishna, we can also offer prayers to the Bhagavatam. And my Guru Maharaj had a particular set of Mangala China prayers, which he liked to do. And he instructed me that I should do that before beginning. It takes about five minutes. So please bear with me. Uh, if you know some of the verses, you can recite them with me. I could give it to somebody here, but I don't it's not so many people to look at. Narayanam namaskritam naram shchaiva narotamam Devam sadasvatim vyasam tato jaya madurayat Vede ramayane shchaiva purane bharate tata Adavante chamadicha hari shaivata giyate Mukam karoti vachalam bhangum langayate girim Yet kripa tamaham vande shi gurum dinatadhanam paramanandam adavam uh, In the villages of Arissa, traditionally, they have what they call a Bhagavat Tungi, which is a place where all the villagers, before television, would come together and recite the Bhagavatam together every day. And they would sing a song every day as a daily practice of Paramananda he madaba Padunga luchi makaranda Se makaranda panakori Anande bolo hari hari Harinka name vandavela Padikori be chakajola Se chaka do lanka paraye Manamo rahu nirantare Manamo nirantare rahu Ha Krishna Boli jiva jao Ha Krishna Boli jao jiva Mote u dada rada dava Mote u dada rada dava Dharma projita kaita vocha padamonya matsranam satam Vedyam vastava matta vasta shiva dam tapa trayo mulanam Srimad Bhagavate Mahamune kate kimba padayishvara Sadyo hidyavarujate tukati bishu shushu bistakshanat Nigama kopata rogali tam falam Shukha Mukadamita Dhyava Samyutam Pivata Bhagavatam Vasamalayam Mohola Hola Sukha Bhuvi Bhavuka Anarto Pasamam Sakshad Bhakti Yoga Madhoksa Jai Loka Shajana Tovid Vams Chakri Satvata Samhitam Yasham Vaishu Yamanayam Krishna Padama Purushe Bhakti Rudpadyate Pumsa Shoka Moha Vayapaha Shrimad Bhagavatam Purana Mamalam Yad Vaishnavanam Priyam Yasmin Paramaham Sameka Mamalam Gyanam Param Giyate Tatra Gyana Vairagya Bhakti Sahitam Nais Kamyam Aviskritam Tach Chen Van Supaten Vicharana Puro Bhakja Vumuchen Naraha Arto Yam Brahma Sutanam Vada Tarta Venir Nayaha Gayatri Basha Rupa So Vedarta Pari Vrimitaha Sarva Vedeti Hasanam Sadam Sadam Samudritam Sarva Vedanta Sadam He Srimad Bhagavatam Ishyate Tadrasamrita Tripta Shanam Yatra Svadvachi Kuchit Shnavati Rasa Swaru Shri Bhagavata Tate Veda Shastra Hoyte Parama Mahadva Chari Veda Upanishade Jata Kichu Hoya Tara Arta Lena Vyasa Korila Sanchaya Jai Sutre Jai Rukh Vishaya Vachana 
Bhagavate Sehiru Sloka Nibandana Jivira Nistara Lagi Sutra Koilo Vyasa Mayavadi Vashya Shunile Hoya Sarvanasa Jaho Bhagavata Pada Vaishnavira Stane Ekanta Shaikoro Chaitanya Charane Bhagavata Jaina Mane Sejavana Sama Tada Sasta Achi Janme Janme Prabhu Jama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 29, Text Number 17. Let me find that. <coughs> Mahatam Bahumanena Mahatam Bahumanena Dinanam Anukampaya Dinanam Anukampaya Maitra Chaivat Mutu Yeshu Maitra Chaivat Mutu Yeshu Yamena niyamena cha Yamena niyamena cha Anyone else? Mahatam bahumanena Anam anukampaya Yamena ni Yamena va Yamena ni Yamena cha Mahatam Bahumanena Yamena ni Yamena cha Ladies would like to just say Mahatam Bahumanena Dinanam Manukampaya Mena Mahatam to the great 
great souls. Bahumanena to the poor. Anukampaya with compassion. Maitya with friendship. Cha also. Eva certainly. Atmutu Yesu to persons who are equals. Yamena with control of the senses. Niyamena with regulation. Cha and. Translation The pure devotee should execute devotional service by giving the greatest respect to the spiritual master and the acharyas. He should be compassionate to the poor and make friendship with persons who are his equals. But all his activities should be executed under regulation and with control of the senses. Please repeat. The pure devotee should execute devotional service by giving the greatest respect to the spiritual master and the acharyas. He should be compassionate to the poor and make friendship with persons who are his equals. But all his activities should be executed under regulation and with control of the senses. This is Lord Kapilati speaking. Srila Prabhupada writes in his purport, in Bhagavad Gita, 13th chapter, it is clearly stated that one should execute devotional service and advance on the path of spiritual knowledge by accepting the acharya. Acharya pasanam. One should worship an acharya, a spiritual master who knows things as they are. The spiritual master must be in the disciplic succession from Krishna. The predecessors of the spiritual master or his spiritual master, his grand spiritual master, his great grand spiritual master, and so on, who form the disciplic succession of acharyas. It is recommended herewith that all the acharyas be given the highest respect. It is stated, Gurusu Naramatihi. Gurusu means, quote, unto the acharyas, end of quote. And Naramati means, quote, thinking like a common man, end of quote. To think of the Vaishnavas, the devotees, as belonging to a particular caste or community. To think of the Acharyas as ordinary men. Or to think of the deity in the temples being made of stone, wood, or metal is condemned. Niyamena, one should offer the greatest respect to the Acharyas according to the standard regulations. A devotee should also be compassionate to the poor. This does not refer to those who are poverty-stricken materially. According to devotional vision, a man is poor if he's not in Krishna consciousness. A man may be very rich materially, but if he's not Krishna conscious, he's considered poor. On the other hand, many acharyas, such as Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami, used to live beneath trees every night. Superficially appears that they were poverty-stricken. But from their writings, we can understand that in spiritual life, they were the richest personalities. A devotee shows compassion to those poor souls who are wanting in spiritual knowledge by enlightening them in order to elevate them to Krishna consciousness. That is one of the duties of a devotee. He should also make friendship with persons who are on an equal level with himself or who have the same understanding that he does. For a devotee, there's no point in making friendships with ordinary persons. He should make friendship with other devotees. So that by discussing among themselves, they may elevate one another on the path of spiritual understanding. This is called Ishtagosti. In Bhagavad Gita, there's a reference to Bodhayanta Parasparam. Quote, discussing among themselves. Generally, pure devotees utilize their valuable time in chanting, and discussing various activities of Lord Krishna or Lord Chaitanya among themselves. There are innumerable books that 
such as the Puranas, Mahabharata, Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, and Upanishads, which contain countless subjects for discussion among two devotees or more. Friendship should be cemented between persons with mutual interests and understanding. Such persons are said to be swajati, quote, of the same caste, unquote. The devotee should avoid a person whose character is not fixed in the standard understanding, even though he may be a Vaishnav or a devotee of Krishna. If his character is not correctly representative, then he should be avoided. One should steadily control the senses and the mind and strictly follow the rules and regulations and should make friendship with persons on the same standard. Gauranga gana go to Goloru Haram. Goranga guda tama go pyada kopa briksham. Gopala gada rati dam yati singha gora. Govinda deshi kavadam satatam namami. Pancha kopa the dubischa. Kripa sindhu bhyeva cha. Patitanam pavanibhyo. Vaishna Bibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Om Ugram Vidam Mahavishnum Jvalantam Sarvato Mukam Nishingham Vishanam Vadram Matyum Atyam Namam Yaham So, I want to thank everybody very much. It's very nice to be here. I heard a lot of things about this place from my friend Gorkesha Prabhu. We've seen so many things over the years, but I never had the opportunity to come here. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. My voice is a little, I think the, the car yesterday did something to me. <coughs> so in this verse, uh, Lord Kapiladev is speaking to Devahuti about different types of behavior. As devotees, we want to develop community and we want to develop a Madhyam community. And that's being spoken of in this verse in purport. In the 11th canto of the Bhagavatam, famous verses there, describing the behavior of a Madhyam Adhikari, that Ishvare Tadadini Shu, Valiseshu Dvisatsucha, Prima Maitri Kupopeksha, Yakoroti Samadhyamaha. This is the nature the qualities of a Madhyam Adhikari, they have these different dealings. And as Lord Kapiladev is describing, they give respect to those persons who are, are Ishvare, uh, uh, Tadadini Shu, the Supreme Lord, and to the Acharyas, to their Gurudev, persons who are Adina. They've taken shelter of Krishna consciousness, they're, they're advanced in Krishna consciousness. In Bali Seishu, persons who are innocent, Bali means like a small child. And those persons who are Dvisatsu, who are envious, the devotees practice Upeksha, or neglect. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur in Jaiva Dharma speaks more about these things. He says there that uh, what does it mean to practice Upeksha? And he begins by saying what it doesn't mean. If it's cold in the winter time and someone has no place to stay, it doesn't mean, but someone's envious, it doesn't mean that you don't give them a blanket or even a place to stay. You might give them some food. Then what does neglect mean? It's an important principle for Madhyama Adhikaris, or inspiring Madhyama Adhikaris to understand. Neglect, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, means that we don't speak Krishna Kata with them. Did you ever experience that with a devotee? Sachin Maharaj told us once at the Govardhan retreat. He said, it's just like certain devotees, if you ask them, you know, it's 10 o'clock in the morning, what do you think Krishna is doing right now? Certain devotees, if you ask them that question, they'll say, 
they'll look at you kind of funny and say, what are you, are you sexually agitated or something? You're not, you're not supposed to talk about that. Or sometimes devotees, you say, you know, I read in Krishna book the other day, and you start to speak something, and they say, I've read Krishna book. Leave me alone. Huh? So there's a little bit of envy, something there. So it doesn't mean that you have to smash them or defeat them, but we just neglect that. And we find envy throughout the material world, because that's the characteristic of the material world. And we don't fight with that. I gave an example once when we were giving a class in Delhi, in the temple in the east of Kailash. And I uh, said, it's just like one brahmachari had come to me and, and I was telling the devotees in the class how you should respect all ladies as mother. And the brahmachari came to me after the class and he was a little confused. He said, some of the ladies who come to the temple don't dress like my mother. So how can I see them like that? And I said, well, what service do you do? He said, well, I go out to Konark Place every day and I distribute books. I said, so try to imagine one day you're out there distributing books and your mother comes and your mother's dressed in a string bikini. Now, what are you going to do? The poor brahmachari something kind of short-circuited in his brain. <laughs> he couldn't quite imagine his mother like that. And I said, I know what I would do. I would neglect her. I, I wouldn't look at her. And she's my mother. I, I love her, I give respect to her, but I would neglect that thing. So in this material world, there's many people who want to draw attention to themselves, like such a lady. But we neglect that. We try to see good in everyone. We try to bring out the good in everyone. And it's important in our communities that we cultivate this kind of behavior. We want to cultivate Vaishnava relationships. Srila Prabhupada in one purport in Majalila of Chaitanya Charitamrita, he says the characteristic of a Vaishnava is that he's Adosha Darshi. He doesn't see fault in anyone. In his purport to the seventh canto, the Bhagavatam, Sridhar Swami, the famous commentator, in his Bhavartha Deepika, he defines Sadhu Vaishnava Parad. He says, Nindanam dosha karanam. That Ninda means to do dosha kirtan, or to speak about the faults of some other person. It's like I may say, Lila Purushottam. I saw him in the bathroom the other day, and he was eating prasada. And I, maybe I write a big article about it on Facebook and things. So to do kirtan of someone else's fault, that's ninda. And it's not our business. It's the business of Gurudev. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he wrote one letter to a disciple, and he said, I don't know why, you're wanting to take on the unpleasant duty of chastising the other devotees. He said, that's my job as a guru. Why you're wanting to do that? But because we have this disease that we want to be like Krishna, or we want to be like guru, and sometimes we try to push ourselves in that way. But we're instructed that unless someone has faith in us, you can't correct them like that. And better, as Srila Prabhupada spoke in Mauritius in a visit in 1976, a very beautiful comments he made there. He, the devotees introduced to him some leading people in the community there, non-devotees, and Prabhupada was giving a talk, this was published in Back to Godhead magazine, and Prabhupada told them Vedic society is based on the principle of love between husband and wife, father and son, the king and the citizens, and so on. Civilization must be founded on love, not law. By law, you cannot make a person love you. First, he must love you. Then, he will gladly follow your law. Modern civilization lacks this basis of love, so everything is superficial and false. 
But if devotion to Krishna is made the basic principle, then people will be happy. So our principle is love. But we should learn how to apply that according to different persons. As Radnath Maharaj once said in a class, I appreciated the point, he said that we should spend 25% of our time, of our association ideally, with devotees who are more advanced than us. We should give 25% of our association with devotees who are junior to us. And we should spend 50% of our time with our equals or friends. And it's important, as Srila Prabhupada is mentioning several times in his purport, that we develop friendship with the devotees. If we don't have community which is based on love, and it's only based on law, on rules and regulations, then as Srila Prabhupada commented, everything will become superficial and false. It won't be actual. So how do we develop that love? In the Satpata Tantra, there's a nice verse which describes it. Hari Lila Sutochesu. Uh, Hari Lila. My brain's a little dull today after a long day. So. Hari Lila Sutochesu. He says that, that um, if. Um, Yata bhakti nanashati, the last part of the verse says, that if you want to protect your bhakti, you don't want to fall down, then we need to learn how to develop love with the devotees. And how do we love devotees? So many people, they talk about love. I remember after my Gurmaj left this world, there was a lot of confusion, a lot of disagreement amongst his followers. And one year there was a Vyas Puja program, and we were all gathered there together, and one of the senior God brothers got on the stage, and he said, we should all love each other. That's nice. And he said, I want everybody here to turn to the devotee next to you and give him a hug and say, I love you. And I have to admit, it was a little strange. I, there was a God brother next to me. We kind of rolled our eyes in our head, and we did that thing. It didn't really make any effect. You can't just tell someone to love someone. That's the way that non-devotees do. And they have t-shirts and so many things which say love. But they don't know what love is. Huh? The, the maha mantra we have is the Hare Krishna mantra. In the material world, they, we have a maha mantra also, which is three words instead of 16. The three words are, I love you. We chant the Hare Krishna mantra, and we consider that we can get perfection by just hearing that mantra. And in the material world, if someone hears this material mantra, they consider that's also perfection. And they, she'll call her girlfriend on the phone, he told me I love you, oh, and she's very romantic like that. But there's three problems with that mantra. First of all, we don't know who I am. Secondly, I don't know what love is. And thirdly, I don't know who you are. So love is described in the Bhagavatam, it's, uh, Ahaitaki, apatiyata, yatma superseded. It has these three qualities. It has no motivation. It never stops. And it's fully satisfying to the self. But love in the material world is always selfishly motivated, and therefore it always ends, and it's never satisfying for the self. So hari lila sutochara padeshi satatam tvaya karya pritistavahara yata bhakti nanashiti. The sattva tantra describes that we should love devotees, and if we love devotees, then we'll be protected from falling down. But how do we love devotees? By coming together and hearing Krishna Kata. Prabhupada mentions in the purport to this Bhagavatam verse, the Gita verse about Paraspara and how the devotees come together and they hear back and forth. There's a similar statement in the Bhagavatam 11.330, which, is, which states that Paraspara and Katanam we should learn how to associate with devotees. And we do that by having Krishna Kata. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he said we should do Kirtan. But just as we don't separate Radha from Krishna, 
we don't separate Krishna from his Surup Shakti, we also should not separate Kirtan, which is Krishna, from Kata, which is a manifestation of Radha. Srimati Radharani, she's Bhakti Devi. And as Bhakti Devi, she's teaching us and helping us to serve Krishna. So Krishna is a Banatha Namanami, no? He manifests in the form of the holy name. But to learn how to serve Krishna, we have Krishna Kata. If we only do Kirtan, as we've been mentioning recently in Goloka Dham, in Arissa, in Jagannath Puri, where we've been living for 30 years, uh, there's many people who chant the Hare Krishna mantra. They have a, a song sometimes they sing. Some of the, um, Hari, what is it? Uh, Rama Nama Ladu, Krishna Nama Gi, Hari Nama Kanda Kira Gori Gori Pi. Uh, that the name of Lord Ram is like a nice Ladu. The name of Krishna is like nice Gi. So you take the Rama Nama Ladua, the Krishna Nama Gi, and the Hari Nama Kanda Kira, the name of Lord Hari, which is like sweet rice, and Gori Gori, you mix them all together. In P, you drink it. In Arissa, even the Smartas, when they get married, part of the marriage ceremony is that the girl is initiated in the Hare Krishna mantra. So the Maha Mantra is very well known there, but so many people have so many different conceptions. And if you go past the Govardhan Mutt, which is a place of Shankaracharya in Jagannath Puri, maybe some of you, if you've been to Puri, maybe you've walked past that place sometimes. A very ancient place. It was built there by, started by Shankaracharya, Adi Shankar, when he visited there about a thousand years ago. They also chant the Hare Krishna mantra sometimes. But what is their conception of Krishna? Is that Krishna is Savishesh Brahman. He's Brahman with a, with, a, with a form. And their desire is to merge with that Brahman. So they're chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. And similarly in our kirtans, who knows what all the devotees are thinking. And some may be chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, where's a wife, where's a wife, Rama, Rama, Hare, Hare, or when's a prasadam, when's a prasadam, Rama, Rama, Hare, Hare. Who knows what devotees are thinking? But when we have Krishna Kata, then we can come together on the same page. And if we're Paraspurana Katanam Pavanam Bhagavadyasa, we learn to associate with devotees by having Krishna Kata, and that creates community. We should learn to love devotees. We should learn to serve the devotees. As Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told the residents of Nabadweep, and Chaitanya uh, Mungo, when he was leaving, he told them that you should uh, love and serve each other. That's Vaishnav community. When we love and we serve each other, and by doing that, we come close together. There was a disciple of Ramanuja Charja, his name was Lala Charja. And once Ramanuja called for him, and he told him, Lala Charja, you should serve the Vaishnavas. Yes, Guru Maharaj. How should I serve the Vaishnavas? He said, you should love the Vaishnavas as much as you love Krishna. And Lala Charja, he said, he was a very simple person. He said, Guru Maharaj, I, I don't think I can do that. And then, then Ramanuja told him, okay, then you should love the Vaishnavas as much as you love your guru. And he said, Guru Maharaj, I, I'm very sorry, I, I don't think I can do that either. And he said, okay, then you should love the Vaishnavas like your brother, like, like a family member. He said, oh, I can do that, Guru Maharaj. And so Lala Charja took that instruction to love the Vaishnavas. Prabhupada said in one lecture in Los Angeles in 1968, he said, we should love the devotees. This is our society. If we don't love the devotees, how can we make advancement? Bhakti stu Bhagavad Bhakti Sangena Pari Jayate in the Brihanaradiya Purana, it's described that bhakti comes from the devotees. Bhakti comes from our sangha with the devotees. And the Prema Vilas <coughs> by Nichananda Das, a disciple of Janava Mata, there's a discussion between uh, Lokanath Goswami and Narutam Das Thakur, where he speaks about guru and disciple. And he says that if a disciple wants to make advancement, then he has to learn to associate with the devotees. 
and hear and chant with the devotees. Otherwise, they won't be able to please Guru. It's so important to learn to love the devotees. So Lala Charja had this instruction from Ramanuja that he should love the devotees. One day, he was sitting in his home. They were living on the, near the bank of the Kaveri River. And his wife came in and she told her husband, I was just out washing the clothes in the river. <coughs> and I found a dead body. There was some dead body that floated down the river. And it's a Vaishnav. He had tilak on and kunti mala and things. And when Lalda Charja heard that, he remembered his Guru Maharaj's instruction. And he felt very sad. Oh, my brother died. He didn't know who the Vaishnav was. Didn't know anything about him, but he felt very sad. So he arranged for a palaquin, and they went and they took the body of that Vaishnava to the smasana, the uh, crematorium grounds, and they burned the body of that Vaishnava. And Lalda Charja then, he arranged for a festival. He told all the Brahmins in the town, said, my brother died, my friend, and I want to invite all of you, we're going to do some shrad ceremony. Now those Brahmins were very pukka, smart to Brahmins, and they were speaking amongst themselves, what is this? Nobody knows who this was, whether he's a gunda, you know, low-class thief, or he was a high-class person, and this crazy Lala Charja, he's trying to, to push this Vaishnav principles on us and say that we should come and eat some kind of food, which he calls prasadam, who knows if it's actually prasadam or not. And so they didn't come. And Lala Charja felt very sad. So he went to Ramanuja and he said, Gurmaj, my brother died and found his body. And I invited all the Brahmins for some shrad, but they're not coming. I don't know what to do. And Ramanuja at that time, he didn't say anything. He just started gazing at the sky. And after a moment, he looked back at Lala Charja and he said, just go home and cook and some people will come. Yes, Guru Maharaj. With great faith in his guru and great happiness, Lala Charja, he was very simple, went home and he began cooking and offering boga to the Lord. And after some time, uh, a group of very effulgent Brahmins showed up in the village. And they asked the local people, there's some fellow here named Lala Charja? Yes. We're here for the Shrad ceremony. We heard that, that he's feeding the Brahmins and we came for that. Where is his house? And they pointed it out. And they all went there and Lala Charja was very happy. Yes, Guru Maharaj said you were going to come. Please come sit down. And he brought leaf plates for everybody and served them out prasadam. And he was serving them with such sincerity after a few minutes, suddenly the, the forms of those Brahmins changed and he saw they all had four-armed forms, residents of Vaikuntha. And Lalda Charja became very ecstatic and he began crying in happiness and all, oh, offering us obeisances. And they said, thank you very much. And they got up and they went to leave and they resumed their normal two-handed forms that we could see. And they came out of the house, and when they came out of the house of Lala Charja, all the envious Brahmins in that village, they'd gathered together, and they decided they were going to make fun of the Brahmins, the visiting Brahmins, who had eaten that so-called prasadam, they said, in the house of Lala Charja. So when they came out, they were making fun of them and laughing at them. But much to their surprise, those Brahmins just ignored them, and they were walking, and suddenly, like they were going up steps, they started walking, only there was no steps. They were going up into the sky until they disappeared. And the Brahmins were a little shocked, those village Brahmins. And as we say in America, they had an attitude adjustment. They realized we made a big mistake. And they went to Lala Charja and they bowed down and said, we, we didn't understand how exalted you are and, and please forgive us. By your grace, we got to see these Vaikuntha Basis. And Lala Charja told him, no, 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 no. You're very kind to me. It was by your mercy that they came to my house and I got to have their darshan. I'm very grateful to you. So that's the nature of a Vaishnav. 
the, the soul of a Vaishnava is they want to serve the devotees, they want to serve the other Vaishnavas. And that's the essence <coughs> of community, that's the essence of our madhyam behavior. Ishwari Taradine Shu Baliseshi Dvisatsucha Prema Maitri Kupo Piksha Yakuroti Samadhya Maha. That we offer prema, love to the Lord and to those persons who are Dineshu, the Acharyas, Gurudev. In Maitri we make friends with devotees, more advanced devotees, and those persons who are Baliseshu who are simple then we show mercy to them. And Bhaktivinoda in Jaiva Dharma explains that <coughs> we show that mercy in proportion to their simplicity. If someone's very, very simple, then we can give them so much mercy. If they're a little bit simple, then we can give them a little mercy. But we, according to how simple they are, we reciprocate with them. And for those persons who are... Who, uh, uh, envious persons, we practice upeksha, we neglect them. So I want to stop there. Uh, they asked me to answer some questions from devotees here, and I told uh, Lila Purushottam Prabhu that I wasn't very comfortable with that because we should have our Bhagavatam class. Srila Prabhupada wanted that. And my Guru Maharaj used to sometimes say that uh, if you don't do any other sadhana, Every day you should hear Srimad Bhagavatam. And sometimes devotees would ask me, what about chanting Hare Krishna? He put that in a different category. He said, better that you die than not chant your 16 rounds. But uh, he said, every day we should hear Srimad Bhagavatam. It's a very, very important thing. So the devotees sent some questions to us. Some of them were a little um, private, I felt. Um, so I'm looking for those questions in our WhatsApp thing. Here it is, I think, yeah. So if that's okay, we can, and unless some, first of all, somebody has some reflections or comments, questions about the Bhagavatam class, maybe we should start with that, Prabhuji. Thank you. So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Saralatahi Vaishnava, it said that the quality of a Vaishnava is that they're simple. And what does that simplicity mean? It doesn't mean that they're stupid. <laughs> the Vaishnava is the wisest person. But the simplicity is there that they're simple in their focus. Their simplicity is their sincerity. That they're uh, one pointed. Vyavasyatmika buddhi ekeha kuru nandana. That's their simplicity. They're not bahusaka yanantascha going all over the place with so many different things. But their simplicity is they just want Krishna. And that is reflected in their dealings also. That their dealings are also very simple. They're not political, they're not very complicated, they're not worried about having a position uh, of in the society or this, they just want to serve and they accept whatever services they're given by their guru, by their authorities and, and that's their life and, and, and they don't aspire to do something else. I remember to give an example of this, I was giving a class once in Vrindavan and I'm trying to remember exactly the details but I was saying something about how we should respect guru or something and and one Mataji in the class, Prabhupada disciple, became a little unhappy and she said, well, this is nice, you know, but uh, sometimes those persons, they're not qualified and how can we respect them? And I responded to her, I said, well, you know, in the Bhagavatam, there's two different descriptions given of the universe. And one is from the bottom looking up and the other is from the top looking down. So in the same way, we have two different perspectives about devotees and about leaders. And we can look from the top down as a leader. And the leaders, they can chastise other leaders and they can give seminars about what it means to be a leader. But for the rank and file devotees, they have a different perspective. And I was speaking from the perspective of the rank and file devotees. 
because that's my position. I don't see myself as a big leader. So uh, that simplicity is manifested. A devotee may accept their position. And they don't need to be a big, big leader. They can be just happy just washing dishes and just doing whatever service there is. That's simplicity in service. And they don't aspire. Whereas on the other hand, if we're trying to be something that we're not, and we're constantly trying to give instructions to the leaders or this or that, which we see is very common today, unfortunately, it creates confusion in the society. Rather, we, we, Prabhupada says in, in one letter, when you see problems amongst the devotees, better that you teach by your example than trying to correct others with this, in a way that's not appreciated. Then we can say many, many things about simplicity, but that's a little something. Is that helpful? Thank you, Prabhu. Anybody else with any... Prabhuji? Hi, Krishna. Nice to see you. Hi, Krishna. So, uh, when we uh, start to discriminate, unless we're on the Madhyam platform, uh, like to say, you know, somebody's inferior, somebody's envious, or something like that. Do we not making offense then? Well, I- I- if we practice upeksha, then everything is okay. If we practice giving instruction or chastisement to somebody else, that's another thing. We were just reading yesterday from the Bhakta Mala of Priyadas, which is a book which is appreciated by Bhaktivinoda Talk, where he quotes in his autobiography, and which is recommended by Srila Bhakta Siddhanta's reading material for the devotees. There's several different Bhakta Malas, just by the way, and some of them we don't appreciate, it has some impersonalism, but Priyadas's Bhakta Mala we do. And in there he says that we need to build a fence around our Bhakti Lakta creeper, and that fence is a fence of discrimination. We have to discriminate who we associate with. It's a very, very important principle. And how we associate with devotees. But we we should practice this principle according to our position. And if someone's a temple president, if someone is a parent of a child, if someone's a teacher, then you have a responsibility to correct those persons who are under your charge. And you can... But you can only do that to the extent that they have faith in you and they want to listen to you. Mm-hmm. So many of us, when we were younger, our parents tried to tell us certain things. Sometimes they said, don't go to that Hare Krishna temple or associate with those people. And we didn't listen to them very much. So even we can see in, in our own lives, you can only listen to your parents as much as you have faith and love in them. That's a principle. And it's a, it's a principle of sanity. If someone's a leader, a temple president, temple commander, he can give instructions, but he can't chastise. He can only chastise people to the extent that they have faith in them. So in general, we shouldn't imitate, and we should practice neglect when we see some envy with somebody, unless that person is under our, we have some responsibility to take care of them, then we practice neglect, and we just overlook that. And a good example is with children. You know, if you chastise a child every time they make a mistake, my God, that is so stupid. What kind of picture is that? You know, it it, it looks so ugly. It looks so... If you speak to a child like that, how will the child grow up? He'll he'll be so full of fear and so insecure. But you tell him, that's a wonderful picture. That's so good. And and you're so expert in doing this or that. And, And the child's falling down. But you're encouraging. You're so good at walking. It's so nice. So we do that with children. But we don't do that with each other. But we all appreciate that and we want that. And we, we, if we meet someone, some senior Vaishnava who overlooks our faults and encourages whatever little good things that we have, we tend to love that person. And devotees who understand that principle, generally they're also good book distributors. They understand if you can find some good quality in the person in front of you. I, I, even, I, I had a hard time doing book distribution with businessmen with a briefcase and a suit and tie. They're always in a big hurry, and sometimes they're a little proud and arrogant. But then I learned to give respect to them. I learned to see them as better than me, at least in certain ways. Maybe they're smoking and drinking and doing all bad things, but he's more expert at dealing with money than I am. You can ask my wife. I'm terrible. 
with that. Huh? He, he's more responsible in so many ways than I am. So let me give respect to him from my heart. And if somehow I can express that to him, then he appreciates that. Those are general principles of behavior. Is that helpful? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Prabhu. Dila Prabhu. <coughs> I had actually a very similar question, but I want to specify a little more. Uh, Srila Prabhupada mentions in the purport to that verse, uh, the, uh, he hints that verse, Sajatiya Sasnigdha Sangha, and it has the specific context in, in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, putting the condition in which we should practice uh, Bhagavad Kata, in which we should discuss Bhagavad Kata. And very often uh, this, um, this Svajatiya is interpreted as like-minded. It's like th there, there is uh, interpreted like of your jati, of, 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 your, of your caste. But very often it's like like-minded. You, you should hear Bhagavad Kata or listen or discuss Bhagavad Kata among a long like-minded devotees. So I wanted to ask you uh, uh, to describe how how one gets to the to the situation that he's aware of who's the like-minded and and like kind of a similar thing like like uh, where do I where do I can uh, rely on my on my uh, choosing the, the 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 specific Vaishnava Sangha. And it's like if you're sitting here in the room and someone comes and puts 20 blankets on top of you. And you can't see anything in the room. You can't even see any light. Everything's dark. And as people start taking off the blankets one at a time, after some time you begin to see a little bit of light through the blankets. And then you start to see a little bit of form and, and some shapes and things. And, and then so that's Cheto Darpana Marjana. When we're covered over by the material nature, we're so dull, we can't discriminate. We don't know the process of discrimination. Just like a child. You can tell the child to discriminate, but the child's not able to do it on his own. Rather, you just have to have certain rules. Don't do this. Don't play with them. Don't go here. Don't go there. Because the child's not able to discriminate. But being a parent means you want to teach them to discriminate. And sooner or later, they have to make their own choices. A, a, an adult will tell them they should think for yourself. But a child, you say, don't drink bleach. And you don't tell them you should be an independent thinker. And maybe you want to do it, maybe you don't want to do it. You can think about it yourself. You don't tell the child. You just tell the child, don't do that. Uh -huh. So in a similar way, in our beginning in spiritual life, we need to take shelter of devotees who can guide us and help us with our discrimination. And sometimes that may be in a very broad way, which is not so specific for us, and sometimes it, it may be in ways which are a little artificial, just like with a child, a three-year-old child, you tell them, don't go outside the yard. There's a fence there, don't go past the fence. And the three-year-old child says, why not? And, and it, you can write a book. Why not? Because someone may kidnap you, someone may beat you, someone may give you poison, your car may run you over, a dog may bite you. You know, so many things might... But instead of that, you just tell them something very simple. Everybody on the other side of the fence is bad. And the child says, okay. So then everybody who's walking by on the fence, the child shakes his finger at him and says, you're bad. You're bad. You're bad. And the people who are walking by, the adults, they laugh. And they think it's kind of sweet and cute that this three-year-old child is like that. But if that child grows up to be a 30-year-old man, and he's still standing behind the fence, shaking his finger at everybody, he hasn't learned the art of discrimination yet. The, the art of discrimination is so important. Bhakti Vinod says, yet to... Uh, 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 mm. In Guru Dev Kripa Bindu Diya, he says that uh, Deho, Deho Nata Jetta Jetta, thank you, that we should uh, respect people according to their position. That's the art of discrimination. 
That's the art of being a Madhyam Adhikari. But it requires maturity and it's not something that we can just imitate. And there's a problem when you imitate. Sometimes devotees, they try to imitate. Srila Prabhupada stayed with, um, oh, what's that fellow in New York, uh, Dr. Mishra, who was a Mayavadi and was teaching all kinds of strange nonsense things. But Prabhupada stayed with him. And later when Dr. Mishra came to London, Prabhupada told Jamuna, my friend, Dr. Mishra has come. <laughs> make prasadam for him. Prabhupada was very affectionate with him. So Prabhupada knows the art of discrimination. He, he knows how to associate with him. But if we sentimentally say, well, Prabhupada was friends with Dr. Mishra, I'll go hear from Dr. Mishra. I'll go listen to his classes and things. Then we may fall down. So we have to become mature. The, the art of discrimination implies that there has to be some maturity there. And in the beginning, we need to follow the rules given by Guru. But as a society, we need to learn the art of discrimination. We need to learn. We can be friends with people. We can be friends sometimes even with some Mayavadi college professor or something. And by being a little bit friendly with him, maybe he'll allow the devotees to come and give classes there or something. But the art of discrimination means I don't want to hear from him. I have to be careful in my conversation with him. But I find some common things. We both like the Vedas. That's really cool. You appreciate Indian culture. We also do. And we have some friendship based on that. That requires some maturity. Is that okay? Yeah. So maybe I will... Uh, specified because when you speak about art, it's usually something that you consciously work on developing. You know, uh, so in that sense, uh <laughs> what constitutes to learning the art of discrimination? Is it just matter that it comes naturally by the by the maturing in in, well, in th that art is there in our literature? We can read this verse Ishvari Tadadini Shu and study that principle. Uh, but it comes naturally. You, you, don't, you don't have to tell a mature person how to behave with different persons. They just know it intuitively, naturally. And Krishna consciousness is like that. Pratyaksavagamam dharmyam susukam kartam. I mean, it's meant to be practically experienced. And as we make further advancement, it, it's a natural thing. And we learn... Uh, uh, who were those uh, persons? What was the, the verse you were citing from Bhakti Rasamita Sindhu? Swajati Asya Snigdasadu Sangha Satovare. That those persons are Swajatiya. What does it mean, Swajatiya? Well, the Jati means the family, who are in our family. So we respect many different Vaishnavas, and there's different Vaishnav Sanghas, and we should be very happy and ecstatic and, and loving when we see anyone who worships Krishna, or worships the Lord. But we have our particular family. And if we just sentimentally go some other place, you may have some problems with that. But Swajatiya means something more than just that also. We have our ISKCON family, but within our ISKCON family, there's many different groups. And some of them, they're very much, it is controversy. We all know that, right? Some people, they're really, really into Vanashram Dharma, and they have a particular vision of what Vanashram is, which may be very conservative. And then other devotees are very, very liberal, and they have another kind of conception about living. So when we have community, it means, as Prabhupada was stressing again and again in the verse, we should be with like-minded devotees. And Prabhupada stressed that also in ISKCON. He didn't just say that we should all sentimentally just be friends with everybody in the society. If someone comes and says, I love everybody, it means you love nobody. Because you're, you're, you're being impersonal. You don't know the science of discrimination, the science of friendship. You're just being sentimental. So we, we appreciate everybody in Srila Prabhupada's society. But I need to learn the art of discrimination, especially when it comes to community. And when I'm associated, I want to associate with like-minded devotees who have a similar viv vision of purpose, who have a similar taste in, in hearing. They'd like to hear about Lord Nishringadeva, they'd like to hear about Radhakrishna and Vrindavan, or they'd like to hear about Lord Ramachandra, or whatever. They have a similar taste in hearing, a similar taste in service. And we make community in that way. And then when we have big festivals, we come together with so many devotees. We often sing a song by the poet Yadu Das, who's a 
medieval Gaudiya Vaishnav poet, his songs are included in many different uh, collections of uh, Gaudiya songs. And he wrote a song about uh, Rathiyatra and Jagannath Puri and the kirtan of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he begins by singing, Chori ke mahanta meli koraye kirtana kel sata sampradaya gaya gita. Follow. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Chori ke, Chori ke means an means in all four directions. Chodi K. Mahantameli. In that kirtan in Rathiyatra, it's not just sometimes here, maybe you have some devotees come from Gaudiya Mutt, or some Babaji devotees, or some Sri Vaishnava, or something like that. And we should be very happy. We should feel very honored that, that our temple is so broad that, that other people feel comfortable to come here and here. And we want to treat them as a special guest and make them feel very welcome, as long as they're not a troublemaker. On the other hand, if someone's even an ISKCON devotee and they're a troublemaker, then you may have to say, Prabhu, I'm sorry, maybe you should find some other place to stay. We're happy whoever comes. It may be a Christian or a Muslim or whatever, what to speak of a Vaishnava. As long as they don't cause trouble, we're so very happy if they come. And we may have some, sometimes a Sri Vaishnava or even a Babaji or someone come to the temple, and that's very nice. But one thing that doesn't happen very often is the Mahants come, the leaders, the Acharyas of those groups. That's astonishing. But in the Kirtan of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Rathiyatra, Chodi K. Mahantameli, all the Mahants were coming together. And Koraye Kirtana Keli, they're all doing Kirtan together very ecstatically. Sata Sampradaya Gaya Geet. And there's a hundred different Sampradayas all doing Kirtan together. Kirtan has that nature. We can do kirtan with so many people. As we mentioned sometimes, there's a, a video of our friend Ram Roy Prabhu uh, in New York doing kirtan, and you see some Hasidic Jew standing off to the side with his black white hat and, and, and black clothes on, and he's kind of tapping his foot. And after some time, he starts dancing with the devotees, this Hasidic Jew. And then after a little while, you see another person off to the side. And it looks like the, the Sheikh of Arabia or something, some guy with, with this traditional Arabian Islamic dress. And he's also kind of grooving on the kirtan. And at the very end, you see that Hasidic Jew and that Muslim swinging around together and dancing together in the kirtan very ecstatically. Kirtan brings everyone together. But Krishna Kata that's much, much more specific. That's Swajatiya. Uh, some people like to hear Ramlila and they think Krishna is a debauchee because he had so many gopis and that, and they, they don't have faith in hearing about Krishna. But they like Ramlila. But we can do kirtan with them. Maybe if we like to hear about Vrindavan Krishna, we don't do kata with him so much. And even sometimes in Iskan, some devotees just want to speak about Manasanghita and Vanasham Dharma, and that's okay. They, they associate with devotees who are like-minded, and other devotees like to read Govinda Lilamrita or something, I don't know, or, or Krishna book, they're focused on that. That's community, and that's important. As a society, we should be very broad-minded with, with every, and, and have something for everyone, but when we go home, it should be with like-minded devotees, who Swajatiya. So Swajatiya means much more than just the same family, but it means people who have the same similar nature. Is that a little more clear? Yeah. I would make like, uh, or could I make a conclusion that this feeling of uh, like that I can recognize w what what type of kata nourishes me, inspires me could be a navigation for me to, to choose the Svajatiya Sangha. A, as we were speaking yesterday, it may be Kalpana. It may be just some illusion, some imagination. Wow, you know, I, I, these guys look really, really good, and I'd like to go and associate with them. And, you, and, and it seems really nice, but then you start associating, and after some time, there's something a little weird, and you feel very uncomfortable. So we also have to follow our heart. Uh, as as uh, sentimental as that may sound, 
or as vague as that may sound, Jiva Goswami and Bhakti Sundarbha says, you don't have a choice. And if we think about it, that's how we all came here. Because we liked a devotee. Why did you like the devotee? I don't know. He was just a really nice guy. I can't exactly scientifically explain it. It was just something in my heart. And Jiva Goswami quotes a verse, two verses from Brahma Vivarti Purana, which I don't remember the verse, the Sanskrit, in uh, Bhakti Sundarva, which comment why some people are attracted by bogus philosophies, bogus sadhus, and that because there's some sin in the heart. So how do we learn to associate Cheto Darpana Marjanam? We have to purify our heart. You can't help. You're going to hear a voice in the heart. It may be the voice of Maya, or it may be the voice of Krishna. So we, we have to purify our heart. Otherwise, even we've seen devotees, even there were some disciples of Srila Prabhupada, who said, one devotee went to Prabhupada and said, Prabhupada, please give me a benediction that I can find a bona fide guru, because you're not bona fide. He made such a terrible offense. He couldn't understand because there's something wrong in his heart. So even you, you, you have your guru, if your heart's not pure, you can't hear properly. You'll have doubt in your own guru. So we have no choice. We have to purify our heart. And we have to hear the voice of Chaitya Guru. We're all going to have that happen. And it, yes, it sounds sentimental and it sounds vague and it sounds, it, it's a little, makes us a little nervous. But that's reality. That, that's the way things go, and that, that's the way so many devotees, they're, they're inspired in different ways because they're listening to their heart. How pure is their heart? So if we want to build community, if we want to make right choices, we have to purify our heart. Thank you. You, you had something, Prabhuji? Can you pass it back to him? Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you very much for the inspiring lecture. I think it's very relative for me personally and I guess a lot of devotees. And you mentioned, you quoted, uh, I don't know who was it, but who gave the formula of associating 25% of our yeah. time. Radhanath Maharaj. Radhanath Maharaj. Yeah, I Radhanath think it's Maharaj. actually based on in, in basic, it's, it's common sense. It's a principle in Shastra, like based on this verse to and purport today. Go on. So, as you may know better than me, probably, that our communities are not so big. So, sometimes we may not find the 50% devotees who are like close friends who we can open our minds to right. and have this intimate exchange with. So, what would you do in that case? Sometimes you're traveling with your Guru Maharaj. I, I, I travel with my Guru Maharaj as his personal servant sometimes, and he was the only person that I knew. Sometimes, we, we, I, I, it was the first time I'd ever been to Europe in 1994. I traveled with him. And uh, I didn't know devotees in most places. He was the only person that I knew. He was my main association. I wasn't, it was, so it's not like we can artificially just say, Guru Maharaj, I have to spend 50% of my time <laughs> with like-minded persons so I can't be with you to serve you, but uh, I'll, I'll find somebody else. Uh, but the principle is there. The general principle th that in our life we should search out. And we've seen this, uh, Naranja Maharaj was making comment to us several times before about how he's seen with his god brothers, those, those sannyasis who've had problems over the years are ones who oftentimes didn't associate with their god brothers. And they only gave their association with to disciples. And that's very nice. They're, they're very kind and they're, they're helping people who are on a lower platform, but if they don't have friends, then, then how are they going to have a happiness? One very sentimental godbrother of mine once made a comment that I considered very offensive. He said that, that our Guru Maharaj is a niche siddha. That's maybe, maybe not, I don't know. I, I, I like to think that. And he has no godbrothers because a niche siddha has no godbrothers. And that just caused pain in my heart. My Guru Maharaj, he, had, he, he loved Bhakti Srup Dhamadar Maharaj. He, he was friends with Radhanath Maharaj and Shiva Ram Maharaj and many different devotees. That friendship is, is part of the happiness of a devotee. If you were to go to Krishna and Vrindavan and tell Krishna, you know, you're the supreme personality of Godhead. Nobody's greater than you. Nobody's equal to you. Krishna may start crying. 
Krishna gets so much happiness that, 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 to give respect to Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj and Upananda and Sunanda and the different brothers of Nanda Maharaj. He gets so much respect, so much happiness giving respect to the elderly gopis. So Krishna operates in this principle. There's so much pleasure when we have someone senior to us. And I've seen with devotees, sometimes they have the attitude that, that, well, there's nobody senior to me, nobody... That's a very sad and a very, very dangerous position. So we should follow this principle, the general principle, and try to have 50% of our association with like-minded devotees who can, who can comment to me and say, hey, you know, Prabhu, you haven't come to Mongol Arctic in three years. Is everything okay? You know, <laughs> who can... Who can can, can say something out of concern and I can hear from them. Maybe I can't hear that from a junior devotee. I, I should have like-minded friends and I should associate with devotees and search out. Prabhupada said in one lecture, we should always be searching out association with an Uttama Adhikari. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati he said in one, one article, he said that if you don't see an Uttam. If you think there's no Uttam is available, then you're just going to act in what is an envious, an envious blasphemous is in violent way. You're going to do three things. You're going to be envious, violent, or blasphemous. If you don't see that there's a more advanced devotee than you. We should always be, and if we don't see there's a more advanced devotee, then we should feel very nervous and pray, oh Krishna, please, please reveal some more advanced devotee. Give me association with a more advanced devotee. Is that helpful? Okay, thank you. Prabhuji has something? Hare Krishna. Um, I have the experience that um, actually it was relatively easy to see superiors because there are many superior senior devotees. And it's also relatively easy to have, uh, to see uh, um, devotees who are new, who you need to guide and help. But it, um, sometimes I found that to really have deep bond and friendship, that sometimes I found in my spiritual life the, the most difficult. So yeah, I, I, that's, I think many of us experience that same thing. That, and sometimes it takes time. Sometimes you see someone, I, I made good friends with somebody. I had the, when you make close friends with somebody, it's a very special thing in your life. And just a few days ago, yesterday and the day before, I, I, there was one elderly Mataji at Goloka Dam that I, I felt like I really connected with her and made friends with her. And she had seen me some over the years before, and she told me, she said, you know, when I saw you before, I'm sorry, I thought you were a fanatic because you're always wearing a dhoti and you got a shaved head and you just look like a fanatic. You know, of course, I am a fanatic. What can I say? But then somehow we, we had some talks and uh, she realized we have a lot in common, a lot of interest about art and music and, and different things. And some friendship came. So that friendship, is, is, it's not something like a child, it's like a puppy. The nature of a puppy is it just loves everybody. And it wags its tail, and it goes here and there. And then that's like a small child, it just loves everybody. But the puppy, he, he's like that, and he goes to an old cranky dog, and the cranky old dog bites it. He goes to a cat, and the cat scratches it in the face. And he goes to some person who kicks him. And so after a while, the puppy learns, <laughs> I, I should be careful who I go to. And so in a similar way, a sentimental devotee would just try to be friends with everybody in a blanket kind of way. And it doesn't work. So we need to have friendship, but that friendship means how, how do we cultivate that? I think that's your question. How do we find such a friend? We have to be looking. We have to be ready for that. We have to... What is the basis of our friendship? Friendship is a funny kind of thing. Prabhupada's friends with, with Dr. Mishra. But how deep is that friendship? Prabhupada used to cook for him and they had some talks. It was a little deep. But Prabhupada's much, much closer. He Prabhupada said sometimes my best friend was, was Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Marsh. And he used to come and stay in Prabhupada's home. He was his god brother. And they were much, much more intimate. So we may be friends with so many different people, and just in passing, because we have some similar interest or something, and our friendship is a little casual. But our deep friendship goes with those devotees that we serve with together, and we have a similar interest in mind. So my humble suggestion is that we should always be, try to be broad-minded and try to, to not see things in a superficial way, 
Sometimes we'll look at somebody and think they're a fanatic by the way they're dressed or something. But then we come a little closer and we see, oh, there's a reason why they do that. And actually, I like that reason. And, it's, and it's, it resonates with me and, and we're very close in this other way. Friendship is something which, uh, as a child, we take in a very sentimental way. A, a young girl in school, they, they, she meets another girl and she says, what's your name? Well, my name's Sally. What, what's your name? My name's Lisa. It, will you be my best friend? Because girls want to have a best friend, and it's very kind of cheap. Would it mean? Yeah, I'll be. I'll tell you a secret, and their friendship's based on. Did you know such and such girl likes such and such boy? Don't tell anybody that I said that. And that's the basis of their friendship. But it's a very very shallow friendship. As devotees, our friendship should be much much deeper, and we should be looking for devotees who are like minded. Ramachandra Sangamagi Narottam Das. Narottam Das Thakur famously sings that I want association with Ramachandra Kaviraj. Why are they friends? Well, they dress the same, they chant the same mantra, but their friendship is much, much deeper than that. They have a similar ruchi, a similar taste. And to understand that, that takes some time. We should cultivate relationships. That's our life. We should cultivate deep, long-lasting relationships. And that will be the foundation, both of our individual spiritual life and of our community. And it will help us in so many ways. Is that helpful, Prabhuji? Thank you. Yes, something else, Prabhu? Um, you just mentioned this point of following our heart and many times this is seen as very, devotees can be very cynical and skeptical about it. But what I wanted to ask is, isn't it when we um, go to the mode of goodness and cultivate that, that after some point the heart really becomes like a compass, like the ananda in the yes. heart really guides us as we advance more. Could you speak more about that? Yeah, I, well I mentioned quite a bit in, in comments to Lila Purushottam Prabhu that we have to purify our heart. We have no choice. Just intuitively, you meet somebody and, and you just don't like them. Uh, you may be a great devotee and you're, you're learning, I should be Vidya Vinaya Sampane, but you memorize this verse from Bhagavad Gita, Pandita Samadarshan, I should see everybody equally. But practically, you meet someone and you say, this guy, man, he's got long hair, he looks a little creepy and like this and that. And we may think something. But we see somebody else, this guy, he looks like a complete fanatic, with strange necklaces or this or that. You have some feeling, it's just external. You can't help it because of the quality of our heart. So we have to work on our heart. That's our understanding in Krishna consciousness. We can say so many philosophical things. Don't talk to people who wear necklaces like that. Don't talk to someone who doesn't shave regularly, and you know, that's really bad. Or <laughs> don't talk to somebody who has tattoos, or <laughs> whatever it may be. But maybe some great devotee has a tattoo, or maybe they haven't shaved in a week, or they have a long beard or long hair, and they're an exalted Vaishnava. So how do you, you can't just understand those things from a book. The one devotee wrote a book a few years ago about culture. And they gave me the book and they, they, they asked me to, to give some comments on it. And part of the book was talking about behavior of women. And it said that there's a section about how women should part their hair in the middle and that they should comb it and it shouldn't be dreadlocks and it shouldn't be this and that. And I, 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 I was a little disturbed by that. I said, that, that's such a shallow thing. You may say in Shastra, it's nice to part your hair in the middle, but come on, we want Krishna consciousness to spread all over the world. And there may be some great Uttama Adhikari Vaishnavi who has dreadlocks or who parts her hair on the side. Oh my God. It's <laughs> or maybe she shaves her head or, or who, so many things. So it, it's a very neophyte thing to just try to judge someone on, on that external basis. We have to learn the science of love, and, and that's the, it, it's quite an in-depth in thing. We, and to understand that we have to have a pure heart. And that pure heart means also that I want to come close with my Gurudev. Huh? 
that, that uh, Guru Padashraya, in the beginning we take shelter of Guru, and then Rupa Goswami says that, that uh, in our service to Gurudev, uh, what's, the, what's the phrase used? Huh? That we become one with our Guru. What's Vishrambhana Guru Seva, thank you. That, that we, Vishramba means one, we become one with our guru. Now what does that mean? I am my guru. That's weird. You, you don't do that. But you become one with your guru. Diva Goswami, uh, Sanatana Goswami in Hari Bhakti Vilas, he says in the first Vilas that uh, uh, something guru buddhi, we, we should reject the attitude that I'm not different from my guru. But then on the other hand, Rupa Goswami says, Vishram being a guru seva, you should become one with your guru. Well, how do you reconcile those two different statements? We become one in our heart. We become one by meditating on the instruction of Gurudev and, and, and coming close to him, but not that I'm my guru, he, he's an elderly Indian sannyasi, he, he has a different cultural background, he speaks different languages. We're so very, very different but we're one in the heart in this way. So when we come close to an elevated Vaishnava, we'll come close to his heart, and then we'll discriminate based on that. That'll be our, because everybody has a certain uh, standard that they discriminate by. And some people, they say, if you're from Russia, you're bad. If you're from Ukraine, you're good. If you're from America, you're really bad. <laughs> and if you're from Texas, that's the worst, right? And you say some silly thing, or, or if you're from Iskand, you're good. If you're from Smalchalam, you're really good. If you're from Mayapur, I don't know, maybe good, maybe bad. I, those, are, those are very, very general things. And you're going to make mistakes, and, and it's, it's going to be very shallow. We want to, at the same time, we have a natural vision that we have. We want to cultivate the vision of our Guru Janas. And, and that vision is going to be a little different. As one devotee who's told to distribute books, he just wants to do that. And, he, and some other devotee has been told to, to do pujari work. And, and the pujari, the devotee who's been told to distribute books, he said, this guy is in maya. I don't want to talk to this pujari. And there's a reason for that, because he wants to associate with like-minded devotees who are into book distribution. And the pujari wants to associate with devotees who know about mudras and mantras, and, and the, because he's come close to his guru and his particular instruction. Is that a little helpful? Just maybe one mm -hmm. more thing. That Isn't it also then that as we advance more and more, that our kyan really needs to be connected to the heart, and that at some point, like yeah, when at, we... At a certain point, our gyan becomes vigyan. It becomes yeah, realized yeah. knowledge. Mm. And at a certain point, you know, in the beginning, we get up, oh my God, I gotta go to Mongol Arctic. <laughs> and you go to Mongol Arctic, and you got this little book, and you're singing, Sangsara Dava Nalalita Loka. You don't know what in the world you're singing. And, and you're just trying. But after some time, you wake up in the morning and it just pops into your head. The, the prayers, just, if you've noticed that, and, and, and when you start doing sadhana on a regular basis, it just becomes natural. So when, just like if you, if you watch someone who, who's expert in uh, uh, gymnastics, someone who's really, really good in gymnastics, it looks easy. Now they've practiced, you, you can't see, they've practiced for 20 years or something to do those moves. But they're so expert at it, when they do it, it just looks like the most natural thing in the world. So when we practice something, we practice it and practice it after some time, it becomes natural. We have so much gyan and, and it's theoretical for us, but after some time it just becomes intuitive, it becomes a natural thing that we imbibe. And this is what Krishna says when he says, Raja Vidya, What is the topmost knowledge? It's pratyak savagamam damyam. It's dharma, which is pratyaksha, which is practically realized, which is vigya, not just some theoretical information. Is that okay? It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu. Prabhu, you have something? Mm -hmm. um, Prabhu, I think now like, I understand a little bit what's the definition of like-minded devotees uh -huh. because when you clarify different devotees have different natures and so on. Um, I once heard the tip 
let's say that um, you should as associate with devotees well, it's like a kind of a sequence. You should have a clear goal and you should know what's the means to act upon it. And then comes later that you should associate with devotees who have the similar goal and steer clear from the ones who don't. So I know this can be a let, little bit dangerous if one is too, uh, yeah, if one is like too critic, let's say. But what does it mean to the devotees who have the same goal, like? Two devotees may both of them want to go back to Godhead, or two devotees want to. I don't know, you have to tell me. Who, who can tell us that question? You, first of all, you have to know what your goal is. How can you say two people have the same goal? First of all, you have to know what your goal is. My point is, we can always find a similar goal between both of us, you know, mm -hmm. between any two devotees. So, yeah. does that and, mean. And, and so, those similarities, that's what we look for in our community. In our dealings, we, we, in our friendship, when we do book distribution, we meet someone, we look for similarities. But how deep are those similarities? Sometimes it's, we're both in ISKCON. That's a similarity. But there can be vast, vast differences. Let's just be really frank about it. And Prabhupada, again, he, he, there's a letter he wrote to Satsvarup Maharaj where he said, yes, the black body devotees, they can have their own center in, in Boston. Prabhupada wrote a letter to Jamuna, and he was encouraging her that, yes, she can have a center just for the ladies, like retired ladies with no men there. It, Prabhupada encouraged devotees in different times. And, and in one letter he said, the birds of a feather will flock together. It's a natural thing. So what does it mean to be birds of a feather? First of all, we have to know something about ourselves. If I'm just so, so immature and so neophyte that I don't know what I like, then how am I going to find like-minded association? So the first thing is I need to become self-realized, at least to some extent, to understand what I like and what I don't like. And in the beginning, it's going to be a very general thing. And this is really an important principle, though, with community. There's a, a, a mundane sociologist named um, D uh, Diana Leaf Christian. I, I sometimes quote her. She's visited our, our farm in... Um, Omvix, given some talks and things, and I have a few of her books, very practical things. She speaks about why it is that 90% of the planned communities fail. And one of the big reasons is there's no shared vision. They just get together and, and yeah, you know, there's some hippies, we all like to smoke marijuana. So we'll all have a great community together and we, we all like illicit sex or something and that's the basis of the community. But it falls apart later on, because more specifically, th there's so many other differences. Sometimes the devotees, we come together, we're all disciples of the same guru. We're all in ISKCON, and, and we want to see preaching go on in this net. But then sometime later, things become difficult, because one devotee sees we need more, puts more stress on economic aspects, and another devotee puts more stress on deity worship aspects, and they can't get along. And the one devotee is saying, well, if we just worship the deity nicely, everything will be taken care of. And the other devotee says, man, you're just sentimental. We need to make money. We need to, do, and, and, and differences come like that. So before there's community, we need to figure out what is our individual desire? What kind of community do I want? And, and what is our, our statement of purpose? What is our vision? And have a shared vision. And that takes time. Sometime, and, and she suggests, I, I thought it was very wise, that before you buy property, before you invest something, coming together with people, because being in a community is like being married to 40 people at the same time. It's quite complicated. You want to make sure that you have a shared vision before all of a sudden you, you've invested money and you have all these different... And it's hard for us as devotees because we, we don't plan our communities, right? We, we just all come together and it just kind of happens. But that's one of the reasons why our communities oftentimes are dysfunctional. I'm just being really blunt. They, 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 we have problems and people go away and there's different difficulties and things. Let's think about it. I, I'm not trying to find fault with anything or suggest even we should change something, but we should understand that this art about community. In, in, in India, I visit many small villages and, for example, Raghurajpur, it's kind of a government-sponsored village. It's a little artificial. It's right near Jagannath Puri. It's a village of artists. 
And I, I, I'm friends with Narayan Das. He's one of the pr prominent artists there. So many different artists. And everybody in the village, basically, they're doing Patachitra art in different ways. So they're like-minded. And then you may go to some other villages where it, it's a Brahmin sasana. Where, where it, they're all Brahmins in the village. And they're doing puja or some other village, Gadaigiri, where my guru was. Originally, it was founded by a devotee named Gadaigiri. And he was selling brass pots. And he was doing some kind of Vaishya thing. He was also a Vaishnava. And, and they had a community based like that. So in India, we see, and, and around the world, it's natural in communities, small communities of like-minded people who are doing like-minded business, have like-minded mood. For us as devotees, sometimes it's just so difficult just to get my head wrapped around four regulated principles. And how do I tie this damn dhoti so it doesn't fall off? And uh, how to do this? And, and there's so many new things for us to try to figure out. To add on top of that, this whole thing about community, and when I haven't even really figured out who I am, if I like to wear a dhoti, if I like to wear jeans, or if, what, what I like to do as a person, I haven't really figured that out even as a devotee. It's very, very difficult then for community. But my suggestion is at least we should learn these principles and we should speak about them. We should try to go in that direction. And sometimes in a community, we live in a, in a community with, with 50 devotees. I see in Iskand Mayapur is a really good example. And in Iskand Mayapur, there must be a few thousand devotees. And devotees often complain to me, we spent a year there in Mayapur during the COVID time. We were locked in. And I often hear complaints amongst the local devotees about a lack of unity, a lack of community. But if you look in Iskand Mayapur, there's many communities and there's a, there's a lot of unity, but small groups. You have some Russian devotees who have their program. And even amongst the Russian devotees, there's a big program, but there's also smaller groups. And that's natural and that's healthy. If we consider the point, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began the Sankirtan movement behind closed doors in Srivasanga. It wasn't an open thing for everybody. He began it with a group of like-minded friends. And he finished his pastimes behind closed doors in the Gambira with Sri Damodar and Roy Ramananda. So from that we can understand a principle. He would do kirtan at Rathiyatra with millions of people. And we have this principle, we're, we're open for everybody, but at the same time, in my personal life, I need to have intimate friends who can nourish my Krishna consciousness. But how do I find them? Well, first of all, I have to figure out who I am and what I like. And maybe, I, I, when I was a new devotee, I, 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 somebody gave me a little deity of, of Garuda. And I thought, man, that's really cool. Because I, I, I was looking for some individuality. We're all looking for that. And I thought, this is who I am. I'm a Garuda Bhakta. <laughs> and I had my little deity of Garuda as a new devotee. That was my thing. And after some years, I don't know what happened to that deity. <laughs> he went somewhere else. And my vision, my desire, my, my taste is much, much different than it was then. I, I, just like a child. A child, when he's a, a small boy, I want to be a fireman. I want to be a policeman. But, the, but he's just randomly picking something out. It takes some time. It, it, and this is the process of Krishna consciousness. Ultimately, this is the whole purpose of Krishna consciousness, to figure out who we are in the spiritual world. What, 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 what is going to be my relationship with Krishna? What is my, my swarup? And, and, and before then, Bhaktivinoda Thakur comments in one place that Cheto Darpana Marjanam, we're cleansing the mirror of the heart. You have a mirror, and let's say you take some really, really dirty motor oil from a car that, that's, that's run you know, 100,000 miles without changing the oil. And you take that, that engine oil, and you smear it all over the mirror. The mirror is so dark, you can't see anything. And so then you go to clean the mirror, and you start, and it's a big job. You're cleaning, and after some time, you start to see a vague form in the mirror. You can't see yourself, you can't see color, or, or so many, you see a vague form. Well, that first thing is maybe my position in Varna and Ashram. I, I can understand, I should get married, I, that's my nature, I should be a grihasta. And then, but what is my Varna? I have to rub a little bit more. 
<laughs> and then they understand, actually, I like teaching. I like teaching children. And, and that comes from cleaning the mirror. And as I clean the mirror and clean it and clean it more and more, then I understand I, I develop a certain attraction for a certain form of the Lord and then a certain service of the Lord. So those things will come naturally. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Prabhu. Prabhuji, you can pass it back to him. Hare Krishna. Um, sometimes uh, when we talk about community, um, uh, we like to think of community as a family. And uh, when we think of as community as a family, sometimes one of the points that uh, we emphasize is that in family, they might be very different. So we might be not very, have the same interest at all. But somehow because we are family, we, we still love each other, we tolerate each other, and we don't think we will ever reject this person because we're family. So, yeah, if you just could dissect this and maybe like talk a little bit about it. I, I like that comment. Thank you. I, I sometimes give an example of that. that just say you, you, in your family, your family has problems. Your father beats, your, beats his wife, beats your mother. And your mother, she's having affairs with a few different men. Your father's an alcoholic. Your, your little brother's a heroin addict. And your big sister just got pregnant by a Muslim. Right? <laughs> Your family's really screwed up. And you look across the street, and there's another family. And they're really, really together. And the father's a, a, a university professor, and they're very broad-minded. They're very educated. They have very loving dealings. So you can think, I don't like my family. I like that family. I'm going to leave my family. But you can't. This is your family. As dysfunctional as it may be sometimes, and using this, this absurd examples, uh, that's our family. Our family is our family. And we tolerate them. But, honestly, I may not hang out with them all the time. I may hang out with the people across the street. But my family is my family. And when there's a family reunion and when there's some necessity or my sister's getting married or something, I go to the marriage ceremony. If my brother has some problems or something, he breaks his leg and there's nobody to bring prasadam to him, I bring prasadam because he's my family. I have that obligation. That's just a natural, intuitive thing in our life. We may have many different friends. Sometimes we may have friends. I, I, I found in my life, say something a little shocking, I found that I, I was more friendly, more close with, with, with one Muslim couple who were once sent to, by some devotees to Jagannath Puri. They liked the devotees something. And they were so cool. We had such a great time with them. And I found, to my surprise, I found I, I was closer friends with them than I was with some of my god brothers. But at the same time, my god brothers, that's my family. And, and this Muslim couple, I'm, I'm friends with them, and we, we're more similar intellectually, perhaps. And I can hang with them and talk with them. But when I go home, I go home to my family. So, but then even with our own family, we have some crazy uncle who, who's a Nazi, or we, you know, some, some retarded brother who's just blah, 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 you know, and, and we lock him in the basement so nobody sees him or something. We have members of our family we're embarrassed with, and we don't associate with very closely. They're still our family, and we love them, and we want to help them. But in our life, we, associate, we need to associate with people who are close to us. That's the science of discrimination. And if we just try to insist, we, we, we make it into a formula that you can only associate with, you know, ISKCON devotees, you can only be friends with ISKCON devotees. You're not going to be a very good preacher, I can tell you that. Your, your preaching will be very shallow if you can only be friends with ISKCON devotees. And then within ISKCON, some devotees say, D but don't talk to disciples of that, of that particular guru. Those guys are deviated, or this or that. Uh, we may follow something like that, but then it becomes very rigid and artificial. Friendship is natural. Prabhupada was friends with, with Dr. Mishra. And we may have friends who are Mayavadis or this or that, but we need to learn the art of discrimination. And there's certain things they talk with him about. There's certain family members, that, there's certain devotees that I don't talk with about politics. I have a, 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 there's a Prabhupada disciple friend of mine who really believes that Mr. Donald Trump was sent by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Okay, that's his thing. That's not my personal thing. I, I, I don't have very deep discussions with him. But in other ways, I love him. And we're, we're good friends. That's the art of discrimination. Just some things I don't talk with him about. <laughs> Is that helpful? 
Prabhuji. So you were just mentioning to become one with the spiritual master. My question is, how can we really deeply understand the heart of our spiritual master? So in the Bhagavatam says, By serving Gurudev, it's practical. Prabhupada once, I think it was Shruta Kirti Prabhu, he was traveling with Prabhupada, and they would go places, and wherever they went, the devotees were crying with love for Prabhupada. And Shruta Kirti started feeling bad. I don't cry. I don't have love like that. And, and he came to see Prabhupada, and he said, Prabhupada, I feel really bad. I don't have love like that. And Prabhupada didn't say anything. Shruta Kirti went out. And later Prabhupada called for him. And Prabhupada asked him, he said, do you like to serve me? And Shruta Kirti said, yes, Prabhupada, very much. And Prabhupada said, that's love. What is all this tears and, <laughs> and emotions and whatever? Love means service. And when you serve someone, you get their blessing. Just like someone may come and, and, and want to please you. And, and they iron your clothes or they do this or that. Or they do something you really like. Wow, you're pleased with them. And, and they get some blessing from you, directly or indirectly. And they learn, what is that blessing? They learn something about your mood. You feel comfortable with them and you reveal something intimate in your heart with them. You tell them a story that you might not tell in public. Something about your life that other people don't know. We come close to Guru by doing service in, in a humble, submissive way. And then he reveals his heart to us out of his compassion and mercy. Is that okay? It's maybe... What if we don't have much associ personal association of the spiritual master? Well, one devotee asked me that question once in Vrindavan after a class. He said, yeah, you, you say we should be close with Guru, but my Guru Dave is in America, and, and what can I do? And I, I told him a little, something a little harsh. I, I said, please forgive me, but I don't understand why you took initiation from your Guru Maharaj if you think he's a mundane person. And he was a little shocked. He said, I, 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 I don't think he's a mundane person. I said, well, if you think that mundane time and space are separating you from your guru, then you think he's a mundane person. You can only be close with him if you can touch him. You think he's a mundane person. But guru is not like that. After my guru Maharaj left this world, we went to visit one of Srila Prabhupada's god brothers and friends, Bhakti Prasad Puri Maharaj. In, in Mayapur, who passed away some years ago. He was a friend of our society, and he also appreciated our Guru Maharaj. And I, we asked him, Maharaj, our Guru left, what should we do? And the first thing he said was, don't think that your Guru is gone. You should think that he's in the bushes watching you to see what you're doing. Guru Dev is always with us. Srila Prabhupada wrote a letter to some disciples in America. He said, you're there. In America, I'm in India, but there's a connection. We're both chanting Hare Krishna. And that connection is there between us. And it's, it's a spiritual connection. And we may, in my personal life, I can tell you, I, I had two experiences. One of the times I felt the closest with my Guru Maharaj was when I was uh, doing book distribution in Seattle, Washington, in America, and he was in, in India. But I was, do, I was following his order that I should sell books and collect some money so that I could come to India. And I just felt like he was standing right next to me. I just felt that. And then on another occasion, I traveled with him for a month and a half as his personal servant. And I'm sitting next to him on the airplane. And for like four hours, he was just sitting. He wasn't chanting japa, he wasn't reading, wasn't watching a movie, wasn't talking, wasn't looking around. He was just sitting and just looking awake ahead of me. And I had this uncanny kind of strange feeling. This is a person I feel the closest to in my life, and I feel so far away from him. I have no idea what he's thinking or where he's at, but I'm sitting right next to him. So it's not just by physical proximity, but we come close to, to sadhu in the heart, and that, that closeness comes when we render service in a humble way. Is that okay? Thank you. Anybody else with anything? Krishna Kunj, you have anything? You always have something.
No? Okay. Pubuji. Thank you. Thank you for the lecture, Prabhu. Can you please uh, repeat the context of when Shla Prabhupada uh, said this thing that Vedic culture is not based on law but love? What was the situation? Yeah, wow. Well, <laughs> that's a really interesting quote. He's asking about this statement that I read. Let me read it again. Uh, this is from Srila Prabhupada. It's from his visit to Mauritius, I presume, and I'm going to get to why I presume that. I presume that visit was in 1976. I found this quote in Back to Godhead magazine in the 11th issue, number 1101, 1976. I don't understand what that means. But in one of the issues in 1976, and I searched for this in the folio, and I didn't find it. But it was published in Back to Godhead magazine during Prabhupada's presence, and I can't imagine that they would dare <laughs> to give a whole conversation with Prabhupada in print while Prabhupada's present that wasn't true. It just doesn't make any sense, does it? So Prabhupada said that this Vedic society is based on the principle of love. That's Vedic society. Love is a principle between husband and wife, father and son, king and citizens, and so on. Civilization must be founded on love, not law. Sometimes we're on the mental platform, and we just think of all the rules and regulations and the law kind of thing, and we try to make a, a, a community on that. But Prabhupada said, if you do that, if, you don't, if it's not based on love, then the, the result will be your community will just be superficial and false. Because it's just external. You're just doing it according to the rules and regulations, but you're not doing it out of love. And what will happen when it's superficial, and when something's superficial, you're not satisfied. It's not your yatma supersedity. Because it's hoitiki pretty. It's, there's some affection, but with a motivation. It's governed by the rules. So I'm supposed to be nice to you, just like sometimes we see devotees are nice to a wealthy donor. We give them a garland and we do this and that and we say nice things to them. I, I've seen one of my uh, devotees who was working with me from Orissa. We went to one of the big temples in Delhi and he was staying in the Brahmachari ashram and later he came to me and told me that the Brahmacharis were telling him, what are you doing, man? You're wearing white. You should wear saffron. And, and the devotees with me is very humble. He said, well, I, you know, I, I probably want to get married, and you know, I, therefore I'm wearing white. He said, that's okay. The Brahmachari told him, that's, but you don't understand the system. You should wear saffron. And then you, you meet some sannyasi, some traveling sannyasi, and you make friends with him, and you serve him, so that you can go to America as a servant, and then when you get to America, then you can find a wife, and, and you can get some education, and make a lot of money, and be in America. That's the whole purpose of things. So it looks like love, right? It looks like that, that, that Brahmachari loves that sannyasi, but it's not. He has some motivation. It's superficial. It, it's shallow, and because it's superficial, sometimes, you know, someone gets a mail-order bride. I, I have a friend who was a head pujari, I might not make say anything more specific than that, in one place. And he was a little lonely, he was in his 40s, and as he met some lady from China. And she was really interested in Krishna consciousness, and, and she wanted to become a devotee, but she had a problem. She wasn't legal in America. But she was so sweet, and she was just madly in love with him. And so he married her. And it was nice, she became a devotee, Kind of, sort of. And, it, and she got le her legal citizenship in America and for her daughter, and then she left him as soon as she got that thing because her, her, there was some motivation in the love. So therefore it was superficial and it didn't last. It was false. So in our society, we want to, we, we want to make a strong foundation for Prabhupada's mission. Our relationships should be based on love and not just on rules and regulations. But that requires some depth of character. Because what is love? What do I like? Who am I? If I don't know who I am and what I like and what I don't like, 
then it's very, very hard to have love. And, and everything is just external and superficial and, and we like each other because I'm supposed to and I'm nice to the, that wealthy donor because he's going to give money and I'm supposed to like him. Is that helpful? Keep it real. Anything else? Any of the ladies, anything? No? Okay. Should we stop there maybe then? It's pretty late, I think. So thank you all very much. Grantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Srila Prabhupada ki, Samabeda Bhakta Binda ki, Gopremanandi Hari Hari Bo, Vansha Kopa the Dubis cha, Kripa Sindhu Beva cha, Patita Nam Pabanebu, Vaishnabibu Namona Mahat, and the Kori Vaishnabinda ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki. Oh, it's right there.